Well, we sang in this song this morning. Um, let's all just get up, fellowship, and give everybody a hug and tell them how glad you're, you're here, that they're here this morning and uh, that you're expecting something from the Lord. Can we do that this morning? Because I tell you, there's somebody here you've been struggling with your joy. But God's going to restore your joy before you leave this service this morning. In faith, I believe that. Stepping out in faith, I believe it's more than one. I know it's more than one. That their, their joy needs to be restored in this house this morning. But you know, we come, we're going to enter in His courts with thanksgiving and praise in our heart. We're at the best hospital we could ever be at this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I struggle with those sacred things. My life is very changed. It's a broken heart.
The joy of the Lord is our strength. And joy is a very important part and necessity in a Christian's life to have. Your joy is your strength. We've got to have our joy. And the devil has fought us too long over our joy, but he's lost the battle. See, when God speaks, things change. When God comes on the scene, things change. And we begin to see things different and to know that when we are a children of the Most High God, we have the right to rejoice in the darkness. We have a right to rejoice in the battle and the trial. We have a right to rejoice when we're thrown in the den of lions. And we have a right to rejoice when we're in the fiery furnace. Uh, and joy is what's going to bring you strength when you're going through it. Uh, but I know, I know, I know that God has shown me that, that, that you know what? It's due season. It's due season. It's due time that we get our take back what the devil stole from us. And he can't have you joy unless you give it to him. Yes. Derek, I can't hear nobody but me up there. I don't know why. I'm trying to fix it, it now. I'm wild. <laughs> Too long this is gone over. Satan has me torn. I put in my arm on. You won't run me like before. He's love, he's love. I've come to get my stuff. I've come to take back what the devil stole from me. Think about it. 
being called by God. Amen. The calling and gifts of God are without repentance. Amen. Come on. You've got to do what God called for you to do. Amen. about y'all, but I, I'm ready to just let God have his way. I'll tell you what, I just feeling this morning, I knew, I, I knew before I got here it was going to be, God was up to something because I'm telling you, if he was at my house this morning, it seemed like every obstacle was there. Every time I turn around, if it wasn't somebody showing up at the wrong time or, or if it wasn't this going wrong, and I thought, you know what I did? I said, Lord, of all messages you had to give me, and this one right here, you know what I did? I said, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad because see the devil wants to take your joy. You know why he wants to get you joy? Because if he gets you joy, he's got you strength. Oh, hallelujah. But praise be to the Lord God. This one I believe God is going to restore some joy in this house. I believe God is going to do a work uh, that only God can do. He's going to break a yoke of bondage off of some folk today. And you're going to know that it's God and that He's that you've been in the presence of the Almighty God this morning. And and you know, I said, Lord, I'm not even even ready for this. Lord, I don't feel like I have studied enough, prepared myself enough, but I'm just a willing vessel. So I know God, when I don't have a lot of notes, I'm totally dependent upon God. And, and that's how it should be, is we're totally dependent upon God. But but this morning, um, before we go to Nehemiah chapter 8, is where we're going to go to this morning. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Am I too loud? 8 verse 10. Chapter 8 verse 10. Let me find you. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. All we got to do is take it back, church. Take it back. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. It says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the everybody say, for the joy of the, Lord, the, of the is Lord is my strength. When I am weak, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. When I can, don't feel I can uh, lock up all my my all all. Hades is broke loose in my life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. See, God wants us to be whole. He wants us to be whole in Him. And if we ain't got our joy, we ain't whole. But God wants to make us whole this morning. See, when you're whole, when you're whole, there's nothing missing and nothing's broken. Amen. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 21, I do believe. Let me see if that's right. Chapter 2 and 21. There is not no good thing that the Lord withholds with, with from His children. This is Joel chapter uh, 2 verse 21. It says, Actually, it's 20. Let's go 20. Yeah. It says, Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Fear not. Fear takes your joy. It says, Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. We don't see God doing great things when we're down and out and in despair. We can't see through the darkness or the or the tunnel of darkness that we're going through at the time. We don't see the great things that's on the other side of what we're going through. See, we're going through things because there's great things on the other side of whatever you're going through. But it's up to us to keep the joy of the Lord in our life so that when we, we can go through those dark valleys and those 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 low valleys and those dark dark places with joy in our heart knowing that who we serve who do you say God is is God your helper in the present time of trouble is God the one that's going to see you through the dark places everybody in here is going to go through a dark place every now and then we don't like dark places we don't like those places that's not comfortable we don't like those uh, those growing pains in our life uh, we don't like change when God's bringing change but you see when we go through those things and we go through it we can go through those things with the joy of the Lord in our life. And the joy of the Lord is what is going to get us through those 
dark places in our life. Because when we are weak, the joy of the Lord is our strength, church. It's a joyful thing. It's important that we praise God and be joyful in all things. You know, happiness and joy are two different things. That's right. I wrote the definition of that down. I'll get to that in a minute. But rather than fear, we need to begin to rejoice. We've got a decision to make when it comes to things in our life. We can either fear or we can say, wait a minute. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Devil, this is not real. And I choose to rejoice. <laughs> Even though my bank account says zero dollars. Even though there's no food in my refrigerator. Even though I don't have clothes on my back. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Because see that does something to the enemy. That tricks him up. And he says oh I ain't got her no more. Come on. She's rejoicing in the one who can. She's rejoicing in the one who will. She's rejoicing in the one that's going to make the way in the dark valley. She's rejoicing in the one that's, that's going to bring her to the other side of, of the dark tunnel. To the light. Come on now. But fear will cripple you and make you, fear will make you get panicky and, and agitated and, and disturbed and your whole world's upside down and, and you don't know which way to turn and, and fear actually brings on confusion and, and things like that in our life. But, but when we recognize the spirit of fear, because it is a spirit that tries to get on us, every one of us has probably most likely been there one time or another. Come on now. But when it comes, what are we going to do? We have a choice to either accept that spirit of fear in our life or we, we can begin to raise our holy hands and rejoice in the Almighty God and say, God, you got this. God, you got my back. God, I don't have to fear because of the enemy, God. Because I know who you are, God. And God, you're going to bring me out of this, God. No matter what you're going through or, or, or what may be going on in your life or in your circumstance. But in verse 22, it says, but be not, it says, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the trees bear her fruits. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Amen. Be glad, then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you given you the former rain moderately. <laughs> And he will cause to come down for you the rain. The rain is the anointing, church. The rain is going to fall in this place this morning. I believe that with, with all the faith within me. The former rain, it says, will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. You see, when we rejoice, the rain will fall. How many of you want it to rain? You know, I got some bushes at my house and... God knows I'm not good with plants. I've never been a green thumb. But if I don't water them rose bushes, it's just about every day. They start to wilt up and fade. And, 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 and I'm thinking, Lord, they need rain. Lord, let it rain so I don't got to go out there in the heat and do this. You know, it's even hot at night. Well, now it ain't, but it was. And, and you know, I'm thinking, Lord, just let it rain. And when that rain comes down, y'all, the next day my rose bushes just look so beautiful. Them roses look just perfect. They don't look wilted and like they're dying. They just look so alive when that rain falls. That's what happens when the anointing falls. That's what happens when Jesus shows up. Uh, you don't leave the same as you came. You leave refreshed, revived, and, and gotten your joy back. But it's a choice this morning. It's a choice, and it takes something for you to have your joy. How many of y'all remember this little bottle that Sister Nikki gave us? I just love this. I always wanted one, seen them before, never purchased one. But she gave us, ladies, a, a, mustard, a, a, seed, a mustard seed. Look how little that is. Can't hardly, probably y'all probably can't hardly see that back there, but I can barely see it. But anyway, it's tiny. We all have a mustard seed of faith. We have faith. And without joy, you need your faith to work your joy. Okay, does that make sense? Because see, joy ain't going to be something you just feel happy to be about. It's a choice. You know, when you're down and out and, you're, and, and, and it seems like you're all the, the trials on and, and you're going through persecution and you're going through this and that and the other and, and you're just really not happy about it. But you choose to be joyful. Does that make sense? You choose to have joy about it. You choose to say, okay, God, I'm in the lion's den right now, Lord. But I know who's going to close the lion's mouth. Uh, I'm in the fiery furnace. But I know the fourth man that was in there with me. 
me. See, we got to rejoice and begin to rejoice in the Lord and keep our joy knowing who we serve and that He is a God that will not fail. He is a God that said He would never leave us nor forsake us and He would go with us all the way to the end. That's the kind of God we serve. He's a good Father. In verse 24 it says, And the floor shall be full. Now listen to this, y'all. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore, this is for somebody this morning. You need to take that joy and reach out and grab it. Take that little bitty mustard seed of faith and reach out and grab it. I'm not saying this. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, and I will restore to you the years the locust uh, has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty. We don't serve a God of a little bit. We serve a God that has plenty for his children. We just need to reach out and grab that plenty. He is a God of plenty, not a God of a little bit. He is a big God. But we limit God a lot of times and, and make him seem so little in our lives. When all we got to do is cry out. Is that not what the message was last week? Cry out to him. In verse 20, let me see if I need to read that one. Verse 20, let's see. And it says, And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Mama. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Church, he's in the midst of the house this morning. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. He's a God that is a God of plenty. He is a God this morning that wants to restore you. He wants to restore everything. The locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar come and it's destroyed, took away from you. But it is your choice this morning to reach out and grab that restoration that he wants to restore in you. Your joy, your peace, your whatever you're lacking this morning. He is a God of plenty and he is well able to restore you. But it's going to take a little bit of faith of believing that he is the I am. He is the great I am. And that when you come to the great I am, that the great I am will restore what the locust has eaten and taken from you. It says seven years. No matter how long you feel like that, that enemy stole from you. God can restore every bit of it. You've got to have a, make up a, have a made up mind, a decision to rejoice. I know I can be joyful. I choose this morning, if you only knew what I went through this morning. Woo! Jesus, I will rejoice that song. I will rejoice. <clears throat> it's something about rejoicing when you begin to lift your hands and you begin to rejoice in the great I am and, and who he is and what he can do and how he's able to do all things. And, and when you begin to rejoice, it just scares the devil. You know what he does? It says, it says, uh, um, resist the devil and he will what? So when you begin to rejoice, guess what that's like? That's like pulling gas on them ants out there. They start running. That's what the devil does. When you begin to rejoice in God, <clears throat> when you begin to rejoice, your situation will change. What do you know in the midst of your trial, trouble, and situation? What do you know? When nothing's happening, then the devil comes along and says, you're not going to make it. <clears throat> what are you going to tell him? Come on now. Good question. Yeah, devil, I'm going to make it. Come on. See, the natural instinct is there's no reason to rejoice. Everything's bad. It looks bad. I lost my job. I... I don't have a car to drive. I, I, I don't have food on my table, money in the bank. Everything looks just so bad. And then we can even add we have a sick sick family member or something. It just looks so bad. <clears throat> but as a Christian, that's when God's given us an opportunity to rejoice. Amen. For a Christian, it's when 
Nothing's going right. But you know what the Word says to do. When nothing's going right, we need to rejoice. The opposite of what the world says to do. I will rejoice. When you rejoice, You were in. You will encounter satisfaction and plenty. When you choose to rejoice in the Lord, no matter what's going on, you know sometimes it's so bad that you just have to drop everything you're doing and just begin to do this. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And as you're saying that and you're saying it to God, something about a satisfaction, something a change. It's like the whole atmosphere just changes. And it begins to be, that stress that you're having begins to fall off of you. Because, see, I feel the Holy Ghost. I know I'm on target. Thank you, Jesus, for confirmation. But you know, when you begin to rejoice, no matter if you have to sit there and sing it for 30 minutes and just rejoice, I will rejoice in the one who made me, I will rejoice in the, in the God of my salvation, I will rejoice for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Whatever you have to stand there and say, it works. But if we stand there and we don't begin to rejoice and we begin to take up on the things that's troubling us and bothering us and dragging us down and got us so beat down, we we both be Christians. We walk around like it. Come on, Come on. Jesus. I've been there. I've done that too. But you know what? God don't want His children like that. He wants us to be joyful. Full of joy. We may not be at our, uh, you know, let me give you an example. If I told you you was getting a million dollars in the in the, in the mail tomorrow through a check, boy, I bet everybody would be, come on, Brother Shane, you may be rejoicing. Yes, yeah, thank you, Jesus. We be rejoicing. Oh, I get them bills paid. Oh, I do this, I do that. I can't re rejoice anyway because we serve the baker. We serve the one who owns it all. We just got to rejoice in it. Because when we rejoice, the Lord told me when we rejoice, we will encounter satisfaction and plenty. He said that to somebody today. He said, when you begin to rejoice, you're going to encounter satisfaction in your life. You're going to encounter plenty. Guess what plenty means? It means he ain't holding back nothing. He ain't holding back your finances. He ain't holding back your health. He ain't holding back nothing. He said you'll get plenty. Plenty of what? Plenty of God's blessings on your life. Come on, he said man. he would bring satisfaction. And you're not satisfied. Somebody ain't satisfied this morning. But you need that encounter. And the only way you're going to get that encounter is rejoice. In the Lord thy God. Let's turn to Psalms. Right quick if I can find it. My Bible did not mark it. See Psalms. I wrote these down. Psalms 51. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a choice. I choose to be joyful. I have heart. I have bound. Hey, I'm human. Pinch me all hard. But you know what? I'm learning that when it's on, when the devil brings it on, <laughs> he's learning my name. He already knows my name. He knows when I hit the floor because I'm going to tell you, he's a liar. He knows I know he is. And he can't have place in our lives if we don't allow him to have that place in our lives. But if we give him an inch, he's going to take you a mile. I'm trying to teach somebody how to encounter satisfaction and plenty. 51 and 12 says, let's see what this says right quick. 51 and 12 says, restore. Everybody let's say that. Restore, restore. unto me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with your free spirit. Restore me, O oh God. 
Restore me this morning, oh God. Restore my joy, God. Restore me. You know, we have not because we ask not. God wants to bless His children. He loves us. He loves us so much that, 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 that He, you know, the Bible says if we ask and believe, we shall receive. But when we ask in God for something, <coughs> and if we don't believe it's going to happen, then we're asking what in a miss? Yeah. We should believe that when we go to our Heavenly Father, that whatever we're asking for, when you ask Him this morning to restore your joy, I believe it's going to happen if you believe it. Not because I believe it, but I believe I believe God. I believe what God said. He wants to restore some joy in this house. Hallelujah. And it's more than one. Matter of fact, I think it's about four. I just seen that number. But you know what? It's up to you to make that decision if you want to have your joy restored. Let's go to Habakkuk. And I hope I find it. I did mark it good. Habakkuk, we're going to talk about some people in Habakkuk this morning. You know, it's just one word from God that'll change your whole circumstance this morning. Habakkuk 3, chapter 3, verse 17. Let's start at 17. Let's start with 16. When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he come up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although, verse 17, although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. This is a bad situation. Mm -hmm. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. He just got told everything pretty much is going to be cut off. No fruit in the vines. The figs will not blossom. There will be no meat. Flock shall be cut off, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. In verse 18, he just got bad news, didn't he? But he pretty much be like telling you, well, you're not going to have a job. You don't have a roof over your head, no food to eat, no money to go on. Everything you've got is going to be taken. Your cattle, your herd. He just got told some devastating news. But I believe he got, he knew the trick, he knew the key to his situation. And the key is in verse 18. It says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and He will make my feet like hinds feet, and He will make me to walk up on my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Amen. See, the situation ain't got to be right for us to rejoice. That's right. Rejoicing is your strength. Strength and joy go together. That's why the enemy fights our joy. Because if he gets our joy, he's got us. But in this verse it says, Hind's feet, I will cause you to walk. What did it say? Let me read it again. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hind's feet. And I thought, what in the world's hind's feet, Lord? And he will make me to walk up on my high places to the chief singer on my strange instruments. Hind's feet. 
Walk up on high places is what he said. Mm -hmm. When you rejoice, he restores. See, high in his feet means he's going to take you higher. You're going to go higher when you begin to rejoice. You ain't going to go lower, but you're going to go higher. And, and I don't know how to really say that other than uh, when the enemy gets your joy, you really get low. And you, re and you really get your strength. And, and you really don't want to do nothing. You don't want to answer the phone. You don't want to talk to people. You don't want to be around Christian folks. You don't want to be, you just want to be left alone. Come on. That's his trick. He wants to isolate you. He wants to get you alone because if he gets you around those that love the Lord and can pray for you and break that yoke off of your life, he knows he's lost the battle. But you see, we got to recognize that, that when that comes along, all we need to do, if it takes one hand raising the other, just begin to rejoice with all that's in you. Because when you begin to rejoice, you're going to have an encounter of satisfaction and plenty. And your hind feet will go into high places. When you rejoice. It will. See, we got to rejoice when we don't have a good day. We got to rejoice when we get light on. We need to rejoice when the lights are cut off. See, that's opportunities to rejoice. And we're going to let the devil know, no matter what, come bring it on. Because whatever you bring on, devil, I can hear you now. You're a liar, devil. Whatever he wants to bring on, we're going to rejoice. We got to see these things that we go through that seem so bad, and they are bad. I, I mean, there's times we go through things, but we got to recognize them as an opportunity to rejoice in the Lord our God. Because when he when we rejoice, he's going to restore. See, joy is the fuse to your faith. It takes faith to reach out and grab what God's got for you. A lot of us, or some of us, or maybe all of us, maybe have one time or another gotten stuck. Gotten stuck. And it just seemed like, just can't go no further. I'm stuck. But we get stuck because our faith gets stuck. We get stuck because we're not trusting in the one who's going to bring us on out of the muddy, the miry clay, and put us back on the rock again. We get stuck because we begin to find our faith in, 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 in everything but God. We begin to, to find, um, Lord help me Jesus, we begin to find strength in other things but God. But the strength that you find in other things ain't going to be like the strength you find in God. But to get your joy back, you got to make a choice this morning. God, restore my joy. And then when you leave this house and he and you come up here or, and you, you tell God that and you say, God, restore my joy. I'm believing you're going to restore my joy. But when you leave and you walk out the door, guess what? There's going to be an enemy waiting on you to knock you out of your joy. So when he comes, just remember, when he comes to try to steal your joy, what are you going to do? You're going to say, not today, devil. God just restored my joy and I'm walking in it. See, it takes faith as a grain of mustard seed. That's all it's going to take this morning for God to restore you in the area of your joy. But it's a choice if we want it. God wants to restore it. He's already told me that. Or you that. Us that. But it's up to us. Joy is not about feelings. But it is about a choice. We must make each day. And the reason we can make the choice is because we know who God is. We know who we serve. And we know that it says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Mm -hmm. We know that the other promise is that he shall supply my every need. So when I find myself in need or things coming against me, there's been times I failed the test and I didn't rejoice. It's hard to rejoice when things are coming against you. It is. Right? When that person on the other end of the phone is being really ugly to you and you're thinking, my goodness, who got your Cheerio this morning? When they're on that phone and they're being ugly to you and you're like, okay, Jesus, I will rejoice. And I mean, I'm telling you, it works. 
God's Word is truth. It works. But you never know what that person might have went through that morning. Maybe she had to be at work because she knew that if she didn't get there that morning that her lights was going to be cut off. And maybe she's a lost person. Apparently she is. And, and maybe she's just having a bad morning. But look, I'm the light and I'm supposed to show her the light. But if I interact the way she's interacting, guess what? She ain't going to see no love in Jesus in me, right? She's not going to see the joy of the Lord in me. And that's what people are looking for. They're looking for the real thing. Because I tell you, you go buy your Coke, it's the real thing. Come on. You go buy a cola one of the generics, it ain't the real thing. And nobody wants those kind, or I don't. People are wanting the real thing. And the real thing is Jesus this morning. I don't think there's nothing. If we can't find nothing to rejoice about, we could actually just rejoice about how good God is and how He came and He saved us from a devil's hell, set us on a solid rock, took us off the cracked rock, Derek, and put us on a solid rock. I mean, we can rejoice in those things. It's real easy to see your mind. See, my, your mind is, is, is where the devil attacks. The mind. And he's got to get right here before he can get in here. And so he comes and he makes us think it's so bad. And, 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 and he can make it seem so bad to the point that we get so, so down and aggravated, disgusted, when all we have to 